The U.S. military revealing its brand new crowd control instrument. A group of scientists, doctors, environmental organizers, and concerned citizens got together and they called for the urgent stop to the deployment of 5G. They said mm. that it's been proven harmful to human bodies, that this is an experiment on humanity, and that this should be called a crime under international law. Well, there's good news and bad news. The bad news is that we have over 113 million people that are marching toward the brink of starvation when we only had 80 million just two and a half, three years ago. So that is a serious issue. And the question there is what's driving that? And the answer is seriously simple, man-made conflict. People are hungry. You have destabilization. We know that. And we've got solutions. And what we need is more money. And number two, we need for these man-made conflicts to end. If we can end the wars, we can, in my opinion, end global hunger by 2030. But without that, we'll never achieve our goals and objectives. Take a look at this. One man in Sugar Creek, Missouri, planted this garden in order to grow his own food. But now he must destroy it by tomorrow or face a fine thanks to a new city ordinance. The city of Sugar Creek passed this ordinance three days ago, restricting the use of agriculture on front yards. But this family believes that their garden is being unfairly targeted and is at the root of this issue. There's a radish right there. To say Nathan Athens loves his garden would be an understatement. I spent all my free time out here. I don't know, I would probably say about 300 hours. It's important for his family. I want my family to know where their food's coming from. I don't want to have to go to the grocery store and worry about what was done to that food. But neighbors and city officials don't see the garden the same way. Who owns the rain? Turns out, not you. You're actually breaking the law if you try to capture rain falling under your roof and pour it on your flower bed. A prominent Utah car dealer found that out when he tried to do something good for the environment. Rebecca Nelson captures rainwater in a barrel and she pours it on her plants. We can fill up a barrel in one rainstorm, so it seems a waste to let it just fall onto the gravel. Car dealer Mark Miller wanted to do pretty much the same thing on a bigger scale. He collects rainwater on the roof of his new building, stores it in a cistern, and hopes to clean cars with it in a new water-efficient car wash. But without a valid water right, state officials say he can't legally divert rainwater. I was surprised. We thought it was our water. State officials say it's an old legal concept to protect people who do have water rights. Obviously, if you use the water upstream, it won't be there for the person to use it downstream. Utah is the second driest state in the nation. Our laws probably ought to catch up to that. It's your land and the government wants it. Now what? Channel 5 Cecilia Gutierrez explains uh, you can fight but have few choices when it comes to eminent domains. Is a cell tower going up in your neighborhood? If it's not now, it may soon. Wireless carriers are installing millions of them across the country to enable the new, faster 5G cell phone technology. But tonight, Julie Watts asked the question you're not supposed to ask. Are there legitimate health concerns? 13-year-old Sophia has been one of many petitioning the city council to deny this cell tower and others. I'm also a brain cancer survivor and I am against the cell towers. I mostly talked about my cancer and how it affected me. But according to federal law, the city simply can't consider health concerns. It's outlined in this small section of a telecommunications act based on science from 1996 to turn your phone on or off back when this was the height of technology. But if cities do consider health, the cell companies can sue. So with few legal arguments to deny a cell tower, they're popping up outside bedroom windows and school campuses, despite objections from across the country. Things are kicking off in Sheffield. No, are you proud of your city? People have taken to the streets. They're getting arrested. They've been taken to court. Why? But they're not backing down. He is defending our rights in our own streets. And this is the reason. A private company employed by the council is cutting down thousands of what many people say are perfectly healthy trees. Good morning, it's Toby at breakfast. It's BBC Radio Sheffield, where this morning we're asking. What do you make to the way that Sheffield Council is handling the tree row? The five o'clock raids. Council workers arrived in the middle of the night to chop down trees. The police turned up, knocked on people's doors and told them to get out. The 74-year-old man arrested for 
Witness intimidation. This is complete nonsense. What are you arresting? Complete nonsense. I mean, I've been bored by 74 year olds. I've never been intimidated by one. I can use force or arrest you. It's become a war of attrition involving politicians, a private company, the police, and people. Trees for Georgetown would like to express its concern for the potential damage to DC street trees by the 5G small cell installation. With regard to the placement of standalone poles vis-a-vis -vis street trees, the draft design guidelines call for these poles to be aligned with street lights, third-party poles, and st street trees in order to maintain a visual and physical organization of structures within the right-of-way. Trees for Georgetown supports the guidelines in that these standalone poles should not be placed where it limits the ability of the District of Columbia to plant a street tree in the future regardless of whether the district plans to plant a tree in that location at the time the application is submitted. We further support the guidelines in that a standalone pole should not be placed within the critical root zone of existing trees. Street trees should not be removed nor have their critical root zones comprised for the installation of any small cell infrastructure. You can't see it, hear it, or smell it, but it makes unruly mobs do this. The Defense Department's active denial system, a non-lethal weapon that can be used to control crowds, secure perimeters, and keep pirates at bay. It could be a game changer. This is one of the things that we can shoot first and ask questions later. Uh, normally you can't do that. The military says the active denial system is not radioactive, it's not a microwave, and it's not a laser beam. It's instead a man-sized beam of millimeter waves that can be fired from up to a thousand meters away that are designed to get the subject, whoever's standing on this X, really, really hot so that they move. <laughs> and it's about 50 degrees out here right now, but I just felt like it was about a thousand and I've never been inside a tub that somebody dropped a hair dryer in, but I would imagine that that's what it feels like. However, some believe 5G will give out radiation. 5G is a crowd control frequency device. The wireless industry is in a race to roll out 5G service. Now, 5G is supposed to be up to 100 times faster than current data speeds. Could have used it on Amtrak yesterday. But it requires cell phone tower equipment to be closer to users than ever before. And that is causing outrage and alarm in some neighborhood as antennas go up around the homes. But get this, wireless companies in the U.S. say they'll have to install about 300,000 new antennas for the rollout of 5G. That is roughly equal to the total number of cell phone towers built over the past three decades. The faster network could create new potential for work and play, but it's also leading to new concerns. 5G requires the installation of new equipment across the U.S. So this pole here is 5G. This is the future right here. You got it. Every wireless company is working to build its own 5G network. Melissa Arnoldi leads AT&T's efforts. If you don't already have one of these in your neighborhood, yep. They're coming. That's absolutely right. They're coming. She says 5G uses high frequency waves that support faster speeds, but don't travel as far as current wireless frequencies. So instead of relying on large cell phone towers spread far apart, they need small cell sites that are much closer together. We're going to use our existing infrastructure today, whether it's light poles, whether it's street lights. We're going to make sure that we don't make it obtrusive to our customers and to the citizens. Yet some don't share the enthusiasm. The cell towers are called small cell towers, but they're not so small when they're in your front yard. Donna Barron is protesting plans to convert light poles in her Montgomery County, Maryland neighborhood into small cell sites. This will cause cancer. She was one of several people who raised health concerns at a government hearing last yeah. month. This stuff is untested on kids. Their safety is not certain. These untested technologies are, at this time, not ready to be unleashed into our lives. Cell phone equipment emits radiation, but research on its health effects has been inconsistent. According to the National Cancer Institute, a limited number of studies have shown some evidence of statistical association of cell phone use and brain tumor risks. But most studies have found no association. Well, Ken and Liz, as you know, throughout all of 2019, we've been hearing tech companies and cell phone companies talking about all the excitement about 5G and the race to get there first. But tonight in Moraga, they're talking about the fight against it. Many people here say they don't want it. 
Sitting at her home office, Ellie Marks has a device that measures her RF exposure. She's surrounded by campaign materials that she's used in a decade of pushing back against ever expanding cell phone towers. For her, the fight is personal. Her husband started using a cell phone in 1986 and developed a brain tumor in 2008. Used it all the time, held it to his right ear, and the tumor developed right where he held the phone. Researchers do not agree right now about what constitutes safe RF exposure. The FCC and cell phone companies maintain radiation exposure from cell phones is not dangerous. The FCC is lying to the public. So far, the phone company Sprint shut down a cell phone tower on the campus of a California elementary school after some parents said it may be linked to several recent cases of childhood cancer. Now, those families at Weston Elementary School in Ripping claim the tower could have exposed their kids to harmful radiation. It's rolling out powerful 5G technology throughout the United States. However, some studies show a link between cell phone radiation and cancer. 5G is coming to L.A., and the new cell towers that are needed to accommodate that are popping up all over the city. Yes, but what does that mean for the people who have to live right next to them? Two on your sides, Christine Lazar is here with a look at the potential risks of these towers. And when I say right next to them, I mean literally right, right next, next to, them. to them. Now imagine waking up one day, looking out your window and seeing a cell tower just feet from your dining room. Some people prefer an ocean view or a view of city lights or maybe the mountains. But it's safe to say that almost no one would dream of a view like this. And I thought, my God, what is that? It looked like science fiction from the 50s or something. It's enormous. It is an AT&T 5G capable cell tower across the street from an elementary school and right outside John Ireland's third floor condo in Sherman Oaks. Regardless of whether you like 5G or 4G or whatever G you like, it's absolutely the ugliest thing in the world, and it sits right outside our dining room window. In fact, I can see it from the couch, too. A couch John and his neighbors gathered around one afternoon as they discussed ways to get rid of the tower. The city approved the cell tower back in August. AT&T will pay the city $787 a year to lease the space on an existing light pole. There was no advance notice whatsoever. We saw them digging, and the next thing we know, there was this giant thing on the lamppost. John's wife is a two-time cancer months. survivor. And they put this monster out there right next to where I sit at a dining room table right next to the chair where I watch television. The American Cancer Society says there is very little evidence to support the idea that cell phone towers can cause cancer, but there have been very few studies on the effects in humans from nearby cell phone towers and the risk of cancer. Dr. Josh Neiman, a neuroscientist at USC Keck School of Medicine, says the science isn't settled. So there are some studies that say, yes, you know, cell phones and cell towers can give some type of radio frequency which can induce some type of cancer, but there are also other studies that contradict that. There's there some concern about, here it comes, 5G, health concerns over 5G that will soon be on my phone. What's the problem? Well, first of all, it's a tremendous advance, and I want us to win the trade war on this. It's huge, 5G, because yeah. it's higher definition. Right, right. The problem is that it's got to be closer to you. So we have to put in... Yeah, physically closer. Right. To, to go faster and to transmit more data, it has to, you have to have the tower closer to the phone. So we have to put in 300,000 new towers around the United States. They're going to be in the street lamps outside your house. But isn't we, it a more powerful signal that's coming to and going from my phone? Isn't that the nature of this, this health problem? It's faster. It's not not a more powerful signal because the waves themselves don't penetrate as far into your body as 2G and 3G. But there's going to. But the problem is that the tower is going to be closer to so you. So what? We don't know. Okay, they've done a huge study with 2G and 3G in mice, and they have found an increased risk of cellular changes that could lead to cancer. That's the concern. Yeah, Joyce and Patrick, some of those people here in Greentail worry that these orange markers popping up all over town are in preparation for 5G technology. That is said to be faster than current data speeds, but require cell phone towers to be, cl towers to be closer to their users. It's picking up radio frequency radiation.
Elaine Unger with Wisconsin for Safe Technology is showing me what kind of radiation we might be exposing ourselves to, just being near any wireless device. And you can see that it's going into the red zone on the, on the left side. And your cell phone is turned on, and it's doing this because it's emitting radio frequency radiation, also known as microwave radiation. Unger lives in Greendale and stands with hundreds of scientists and doctors around the world who have signed a moratorium to stop the rollout of 5G wireless technology that's said to be 100 times faster than 4G. Companies like AT&T and Verizon are competing to set up 5G in cities around the country, but they haven't touched Wisconsin yet. A spokesperson for Verizon told me they have no plans for 5G in Greendale and that these orange markers are to extend their 4G LTE service through underground fiber optic cables. Unger, who has hardwired most of her home devices, wants safer technology and fears it's only a matter of time before 5G penetrates our homes and our schools. They will need a crowd control frequency device when martial law comes. Here. Oh, 